Joseph in Webster, New York writes to me, Paul, I'm sorry, but I am still confused. <laughs> you know something, Joseph? I've got, what is it, 218,000 subscribers to this channel. And I got to tell you, I'm going to say 80% of you all are still confused. So part of me is apologetic for that because that means I haven't done a good enough job explaining things. And the other part of me is understanding because this is complicated stuff. This is not simple stuff. And I am so impressed with so many of you that want to learn, that want to figure out how all this works, and you are patient enough with me and others on here, like my buddy John Darko, and, and I mean, just a lot of good guys who do their best to try and help us understand what's going on. And I'm so impressed with all of you that want to learn, so thank you for that. P please do not apologize for being confused, because it's confusing stuff. Heck, half my day I'm confused, come on. All right. You have discussed several times how digital signals are converted back into analog using a DAC, a digital to analog converter. I understand that a digital signal is a momentary representation of the voltage at a specific point in time. That is correct. And not a stable state representation. Where does the continuous waveform come from and why isn't it stair-stepped like a digital waveform? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, Okay, it actually is. So here's a real simple answer. And, and let me start out by just trying to explain what he's referring to. We've talked about the train analogy before, but imagine, and I, I still like the train a lot. So you've got music playing, right? Here's a simple, let's just say it's a sine wave, up and down, up and down, up and down, one frequency all going along. And we know that music is a collection of these sine waves at all sorts of different frequencies, and together they make this thing that goes up and down in voltage. So what happens is in an A to D converter, which is the opposite of a D to A converter, that analog, what we listen to, to digital converter, what it's doing is it's taking little snapshots, very quickly taking snapshots of where this wiggle thing is that's called music. Voltage going up and down, up and down, right? And it takes a snapshot at each point and it measures the voltage. So just picture like we have a meter. We take a snapshot, now we can take all the time in the world, right? Just because we're doing this slow to understand. We put a meter on it, we say, ah, this one is 0.3 volts. Then we go to the next snapshot. Ah, 0.31 volts. The next one, 0.3 two volts. And this series of snapshots, which I have described before as a moving freight train, and each of the cars on the train represents a stored piece of voltage, right? So we measured it at 3.1 volts. We convert that to a digital number, because remember, computers just know ones and zeros, and the combination of, of ones and zeros in a certain order represents a number or anything you want. I mean, you've seen these QR codes, right? You know what a QR code is. A QR code is just a way of digitizing a number or a letter, right? And letters actually are represented by numbers, but we won't get into that. Okay, so we have this, now we've converted it into a digital number. And that digital number, if we were to take that and run it through a processor, would come back out exactly the same as it went in. 3.1 volts. That's all there is to it. Stairs, but it does create a stair-stepped output. Because each one, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and we create this stair-stepped output. Well, here's what we do. In a D to A converter, we run it through a filter. Each of those stair steps is a little sharp high frequency jump. Right? Now, there's no information in that jump. The information is in that 3.1. 
But the jump to that 3.1, where it jumps up a little bit, we don't need that. That doesn't buy us anything, right? It's just an unwanted jump. And that is a high frequency. And we don't want that high frequency because it's going to make noise. So we just run it through a low pass filter, which can be sometimes as simple as a capacitor and a resistor or an inductor and a resistor. And it smooths off those edges, but still leaves the primary bit that we want, which is that 3.1 volts. And that's how we wind up with a smooth transition by rolling off those sharp little edges of each of the stair steps. Okay? Thanks for the question. And help us keep on learning and being passionate about what we do. See you tomorrow. Thank you.